welcome to episode 7 of 28 Days of Color presented by Steam Engine Academy. Today's topic is color in art. We'll meet with Stefanos, our Steam Engine teacher, to talk about Jean-Michel Basquiat and his history in art. Then we'll interview with Quez Williams of Irk Originals Art and find out what inspires him. Michel Basquiat was born December 22, 1960, to Gerard and Mathilde Basquiat. His father was of Haitian descent and played jazz around young Michel from a very young age. Much of the music that his father played would go on to influence some of the very great arts that he made. His mother was of Puerto Rican descent and she, and she was a fashion designer. His mother would oftentimes take him to art shows and museums and even as a child when he got into an accident she gave him a copy of Gray's Anatomy which would later on influence much of the very same works that he would do. When he was seven he and his two younger sisters moved with, his fa with their father to East Flatbush, New York. From East Flatbush they would fly to Puerto Rico where their father would work. In 1967, Jean returns back to New York and is enrolled in the City as High School for alternative learning. He would write epigrams, brief, surprising, or satirical statements as a graffiti artist under the pseudonym Seymour. At 16, Jean would leave home, telling his father that he would be famous. His father gave him his blessing and money to support his dream. He would couch surf from different friends' places selling his art and t-shirts just to get by. It's around this time that he would meet Andy Warhol and sell one of his first pieces. And in 1979, he would meet Michael Ullman and alongside other musicians would form the band Grey. So you see, it comes around full circle. And in June 1980, he would have his first art show at the Times Square show and later leave this band. Seeing his talent, Diego Cortez would organize his first art show at Galleria de Art in Modena, Italy. He would later sell his first painting, Cadillac Moon, to Debbie Ari for $200. His first art show in the US would be at the Anania Nisei Gallery, and at 21, he was the first, he was the youngest artist at the Documenta 7 art show in Germany. This wouldn't be his first time being the youngest artist at, a, at an art show. And in 1983, he would be the youngest artist at the Biennial Exhibition at the Whitney Museum of Art. Between 1983 and 1987, he would do art shows from Los Angeles all the way to Europe, all the way even to Africa. It is at this time that his relationship with Andy Warhol would go on to develop, grow and blossom. The passing of Andy Warhol deeply affected Jean-Michel's life in such a way that he reverted back to drug abuse and using drugs as an escape. And despite reassuring friends such as Keith Haring that he had finally kicked the habit, unfortunately he passed. Jean-Michel's transition from a unknown street artist to a world-renowned expressionist expression artist details artworks that do, that only shows the world of a black man through the eyes of an artist but it also shows you a different world a different point of view um, or much of his artwork depicted kings and cops or black black heroes or figures that very much reflected his world and his psyche. He showed the type of vulnerability that was never oftentimes shown in the or in the contemporary art world um, and gave shed light on a voice that was not oftentimes looked upon within the art world. His pieces depicted poverty and struggle and the issues about racism and sexism. His works as an expressionist would go on to be seen alongside with the likes of other artists such as neo-expression artists and contemporary artists in the 80s such as Keith Haring, Kenny Sharp and Francesco Clemente. Welcome back to 28 Days of Color presented by Steam Engine Academy. Today our discussion is color in art and we have Quez Williams here to talk about what he does. How are you? I'm good and yourself? Good, staying home, staying safe. <laughs> right. 
hence the video. Yes, yes, we can make this work. So my first question for you is about the name of your art company. What does the IKR stand for in IK Originals? IRK. IRK. Um, because when I was in high school, I was really annoying. And so I used to tell people that my art was so cool that it was annoying. It, like, it was just a, yeah, Irk, yeah. Yeah, Irk Originals. It was, it was just to make fun of me being an annoying person. An annoying person or just a good sense of humor? I mean, it depends on who we're talking to. <laughs> I can see that, exactly. So what would you say is your painting style and you know what's inspired it? Okay, so my painting style is a little loose. I don't know if you guys can see this, but up here it's like a whole bunch of random colors and random things. Uh, I have like this painting right here, right? That is a Floyd Mayweather painting, but with um, a whole bunch of rich characters and cartoons. And essentially my style is loose with cartoons. Right. I, I, I love a little bit of everything that is cartoons and me being able to express myself and make faces move. I get, a, I get a sense of satire in there with Mayweather sitting around those those characters with money bags. Cause he's the money thing. See what I did there? Huh? Huh? Come on, God. Come on. I see what you did. Where can we see your work? Where are you putting your your work up? Um, right now, I exclusively keep my stuff on Earth Originals. I I keep it on my Instagram at Earth Originals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At I R K Originals. IRK Originals. We'll put that up for you there on the video screen. And how has the pandemic and I mean, just 2020 as a whole affected your work? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> I, I mean, like, un outside of the, the bad things that happened from 2020. Right. right. But for me, oh, it, was, it was phenomenal. Guys, listen. So as an artist, people don't really remember that they need to look at their walls. And when the pandemic hit and people were housed all the time and they couldn't go outside, they got to see that they didn't like that plain wall. They were like, oh my God, I'd like that painting from that guy that I seen that one time on Instagram. And then they yeah. called me. And so I've been busy ever since. Wow. You know, silver linings in the pandemic. Silver linings in 2020. I'm exactly. glad to hear that. Especially for an artist, okay? That is really good. What has been the most fulfilling aspect of being an artist? Um, Honestly, being able to express myself and get my get whatever emotions or feelings that I need to get out on to a project or a canvas and just freely expressing my thought without any judgment that's the most fulfilling thing about being an artist and I think that we always overthink what an artist artist is or what anything is and so yeah we I just do what I feel and sometimes it translates. And I think that we should do that more often as people. I think wow, so too, like, right well, now. Especially that was a little epic. Sorry. So what's the most challenging aspect of being an artist? You know, you seem to do really well during this pandemic, but in general, what's people. challenging? People, people, people. <laughs> um, being an artist is, is uh, a gift and a curse. Uh, you have to appeal to people, but then at this, and, and you want you want people to pay attention because they're your clients. But at the same time, sometimes they impede on your creativity because they're not sure of their thought process, and they want to. How do I say this? They 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 they, bestow, they, they put that on you. 
And that's the hardest part in all of this is to make people happy. So people. So it kind of reminds me of that story of uh, the Pharaoh wanting someone to paint the Sphinx he saw in his dream. Is it kind of like that or is it more exactly, about- Exactly, exactly. Because we, we none of us can, I can't see your dreams. You can't yeah. see mine. Like I, 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 your thought is your thought and your, and every now and then I might get lucky enough to execute an idea that someone sends to me, but their idea turns into my idea after they send it to me and they ask me, then it's like, I'm sitting with it. And then I'm like, Hey, well, this is what I thought. And if that doesn't work, then it's like, sorry, you I gotta guess. Go. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I like, eek, what do we, what do we do? It's crazy, but it's, is, it's cool. It's, it's a challenge, but I think considering the work I've seen, like with the skill that you have, part of that is going to be that partnership in the way they describe what they want. And yeah. When you, a really clear description is helpful. When, 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 when I get to execute an idea that somebody has and they tell me their thoughts or whatever and then I feel it and I and it makes sense that's super fulfilling it's like it, it it's something that I can't describe it's it's amazing to under to, to be able to make somebody's dream come true essentially yeah or thought come true right like, all of these things are really cool and really random and they're not normal things but i love them well that makes it cool too it's always changing i mean and exactly. even with you know trying to help your patrons you know get their their image from their mind onto your canvas have you ever considered teaching someone art um I prefer to teach children because they're limitless and they don't have the same rules that adults have. So yeah, I've guided, teaching is like a strong word to me when it comes to art, but I've guided people in the directions to find themselves. So yeah, um, have, have I thought about teaching? Yeah. I'm I'm down to teach, but adults not so much. There's a whole, they don't follow directions. There's a whole lot of students at Steam Engine that could enjoy some art with you. you may have I'd to do about that. I'd love I'd love to hang out with kids and 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 listen to them talk and and watch them express themselves on canvas and point them in the right direction in whatever they feel like they want to do that we'll have to follow up on. And so even with teaching students, what about the black community? What do you think is a benefit of art in our black community? Um, it's a way to express yourself. It's a way to tell your story. Mm -hmm. Because as a black person, we get caught up in the collective. And sometimes you just need to be you and you need to express you. And I know that it's hard for us to do that all the time, but yeah. this art is a good way to do that, to get it out the way. And so, yeah, like what I do in the black community is I show them that beauty is us. So I paint black people too so I can show the world that we're as beautiful as a Mona Lisa or anything that's in the Louvre or anything that's in the MoMA. Right. We put, we put colored girls and we put black men in positions that they should be in with everything else because as a whole, as a people, we should have that representation everywhere the same as anyone else i agree 100%. exactly and and you know what would you suggest for someone who wants to get into painting or wants to get into another form of art do it uh i know it sounds cliche and it sounds corny and all that i would suggest 
to just do it. Just try it. There's no hurting and trying. There's nothing that's going to mess it up. If there's no right or wrong, you just got to do it. You just got to do what feels good to you and color. Coloring is fun. It is. <laughs> that's why the first. That's the, why the first thing you, they give you when you're a kid in school is a crayon. They don't give you a pencil first. They give you a crayon. They give. They say draw your feel because that's the most natural thing that we have mm -hmm. our our dreams our thoughts our everything are exposed with a blank sheet of paper and a crayon that was very eloquently put thanks I, every now and then i say something good <laughs> is there anything else you want to tell our students and our viewers students um you are what you want to be. You can do anything and everything. You can create whatever. I'm literally, like, this is Scar from The Lion King as Scarface from the movie. Oh. That shouldn't, that doesn't even exist. I, Cut. I made that happen. <laughs> you can make anything happen that you want to make that happen. Like we could create our own awesomeness, our own universe. We are what we want to be. So as long as you remember that you can do whatever you want to do, you just have to do it. You have to be, you have to have the courage to do it. Like we're all scared of something. It's cool. Let's just jump off the diving board. Let's just do it. It has been hilarious and also informative to have you on the show, Quiz. And we look forward to seeing more of your work and perhaps working with some of our Steam Engine students. If that, it, yeah, I'm down to do that if they'd allow me to do it. Thank you that. again for being here, Quiz, and we look forward to seeing your work soon. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Take care. You too. To close out our topic in art today, we're going to read Parker Looks Up. This is written by Parker and Jessica Curry, illustrated by Brittany Jackson. Let's find out what happens and what Parker sees when she looks up. Parker Looks Up, an extraordinary moment. Parker Curry loved to dance. Dressed in her favorite tutu, she imagined she was a dancing queen. But one rainy Tuesday, instead of going to dance class, Parker's mom said, let's go to the museum. Ava too. Parker loved visiting the museum, almost as much as she loved twirling and leaping in the air. She pulled on her boots. Mom and her sister Ava buttoned up their jackets. Have fun girls. Bye dad. And off they went splashing and smiling and surprise Gia Parker's best friend greeted them from the top of the museum steps yay it's Gia once inside the friends hurried down a long hall looking at the paintings all around them they saw prancing horses blooming flowers a bushy mustache, a shiny jeweled necklace, two peacocks with red eyes, and a basket of slimy fish, ugh. And feathers, lots and lots of brilliant feathers. Hurry up, Ava. When Gia spotted a playroom, she raced ahead. Parker charged after her. Let's make silly faces. After Gia stuck purple hair onto the easel and Parker added a pirate hat and sunglasses, it was time to go home. Time to go, girls. Skipping down the hall, the girls spied a row of frilly white tutus. Parker raised her arms. Gia spun around and around and around. Wait for me, Parker called dancing after her friend until she froze in her tracks. 
spellbound, Parker Curry looked up. A portrait of First Lady Michelle Obama loomed before her. She had rich brown skin, just like Parker, and kind familiar eyes that reminded Parker of her mother, her grandmother, her sister, and yes, even herself. How could someone look so real and so magical all at the same time? Who is she? Mother, lawyer, writer, caring, hero, friend, sister, courageous, smart, inspirational, confident, dynamic, honest, mentor, hopeful, volunteer, advocate. Parker's mother's voice filled the air, her words coming to rest squarely on Parker's tiny shoulders. She is a queen, Parker whispered, unable to look away, to move, to breathe. In that moment, Parker saw more than just a portrait. She saw a road before her with endless possibilities. Suddenly, Parker felt a small hand in hers and the spell was broken. Come look, Ava, she said, putting her arm around her little sister and standing tall. For Parker Curry was feeling powerful and strong, and even though she hadn't moved, inside, she was dancing. The end. Yeah. Mm-hmm.